Christ. A biblical view of language and truth. If there is nothing else the Bible tells us about God, it tells us that he speaks. God speaks. That's the first thing he does in Genesis. It's what he does repeatedly throughout Scripture. Yes, he does other things as well. There are great mighty acts, as theologians talk of, in the Old Testament. But he always explains them with words. God is a speaking God. When the second person of the Trinity is characterized in the New Testament, the language of the Logos is used. It is not incidental. Logos means word. Our God is a wordy God. Exodus 12 tells us that words are critically important in passing on the faith from age to age. What happens in Exodus 12? Moses is laying out the Passover. And he says to the people of Israel, you know, sooner or later there will come a time in your history when you're dealing with kids who weren't actually in Egypt at the time. And you'll go through this crazy ceremony and they will say to you, what does all this mean? And Moses at that point, he does not say, repeat the ceremony. It's a little bit like you know, the English, I think, maybe the Americans too, but the English, we're all convinced that foreigners can really speak English. There isn't anybody on the face of the earth that doesn't really speak English. They're just pretending not to. So you go, you go to the continent and you talk in English to a German or a French or an Indian person. They don't understand you, so the answer is you talk slower and you talk louder. And sooner or later you crack through that bedrock to the English that lies underneath. <laughs> Moses could have done that here, says it. You just keep doing the Passover until they get it. But he doesn't say that. What he says is, tell them the story of what happened in Egypt. The assumption is, use words to do it. Words are a thoroughly adequate medium for communicating in a way that the mere repetition of the ceremony would not be. A biblical understanding of language makes us realize that whatever modern literary theorists say, and whatever insights they have had, legitimate insights they have had, into the evil ways language can be used, language is and remains God's chosen means, primary means of communicating his truth from generation to generation. Look at the, uh, Paul's advice to Timothy. Hold fast to the pattern of sound words. He doesn't say, learn the liturgical movements of your hands and just keep doing them. Hold fast to the sound pattern of words which you have been taught. The generational divide is transcended by the transmission of the pattern of sound words from one generation to the next.